Hello everyone, I'm DJR Stewart, the creator of the Ways of the Caveman, Ways of the Warrior, and now the Chronicles of Eve. And I am happy to uh, announce that we just finished our very first video in the Chronicles of Eve collection. Please go check it out. So, women, I think it's uh, well worth it. And in that video, uh, I'm doing my absolute best to clear up this misconception that somehow women are to blame for sin, for introducing sin into the world. It's not true. And so anyone who tries to make you believe that, they're wrong. Anyone who tries to make you feel that you're less than what you are, or that somehow there's something wrong with you, and that you need to be more like men, they are wrong. You, ladies, I've said this in one of the other videos, I'm thinking of episode three or four, or just my regular series, that you are a gift from God. Be the gift. Open yourself up to being the gift. Don't give yourself away to men who do not deserve you. You are the gift that God gives to men for loving you the correct way, for being obedient to God. For you to give yourself for any other condition means that you are wrong in God and you're allowing the person you give the gift to to steal from God. You're participating in it. You're just as culpable as he is. He may have lied or cheated to get to this state. But I think deep down, women know when they're being loved correctly. And so now I'm going to talk about, the. Uh, this video is going to focus on um, that the Bible says that husbands should rejoice over their wives. And what, the, what does that really mean, to rejoice or have a deep delight for? And rather than having to stop at the local bar for a happy hour and have a drink before you go home, sit in the car and smoke a joint in order to relax before you go home, or to go home and ignore your wife, because really going home is a stressful event for you. You know, she's, she's nagging about something, fussing about something, kids running around, you have this chaos in your, in your life, and, and you're not sure how to deal with it. All you know is that you really don't want to be bothered with it. And at some point, this takes its toll. And a lot of men, they leave. They're just not very confident of being husbands, of being fathers. And rather, de rather than deal with the disappointment that they see in your face, women, they leave. Oh, men love it when you look up to them, respect them, respect them, value them, follow behind them in their dreams. Oh, that's great. They, they, they love it. But when they don't live up to the hype, when their walk is a little funny and doesn't quite live up to the talk, when they start seeing the disappointment in your eyes rather than the, your eyes, the sparkle in your eyes, they see disappointment. You're constantly reminding them that somehow they're not what they sold themselves to be. All they can think about at that point is how to get away. And really, all they've created for themselves is they live in hell. And this is not to, to feel sorry for men because they created the situation. Really, it's to feel sorry for you and the children, if you have children. But e either way, weak, ineffective, feckless men create pain for women. And that, as I explained to you in the uh, first video in this series, you are the conduit to God, ladies. The pain you feel, God feels. The love that flows from God flows through you. When you give that love away to a man who's not deserving, who's not obedient, you are allowing him to steal from God and you're helping. And so I'm going to suggest to you that any man, doesn't matter who he is, boyfriend, fiance, husband, any man, that does not love you properly the way God expects him to love you, that you don't have an obligation to be submissive to him. Don't, don't allow you to give your gift away, to give what God gave you away to a man who's not deserving. I know there are going to be people out there that say, well, you know, J.R., the, the, wife, the, the Bible says for, for the wife to be submissive or to submit and to her husband in all things. It does. But it also calls for your husband to love you the right way. 
to, be, to, to rejoice over you the right way. Don't bring half an equation to me. Tell me what women should do when the men and the husbands are not doing their part. It's not fair. It's not right. It's, God doesn't expect, God would rather expect for you to stop it. Stop the pain. Stop the hurt. God expects to work through you to get to the husband. How can you get to the husband, get his attention, when you're giving the gift of God away to the husband, when he doesn't deserve it? How is that possible? The Bible is not necessarily just the words that it says. It's the meaning, the intent. Also, this is why you have to read the entire Bible. Get the bigger picture of what's being said. Not just a verse here and a verse there and a scripture here and a scripture there. And ladies, you know perfectly well if you are being loved the right way. If you are being rejoiced over. I'll give you another example. How many times did your husband say thank you in the course of a day? Hmm? If the answer is none, then there's a problem. At least once a day. And sometimes I slip. I'm not, I'm not perfect. But when I do slip, I make sure I correct it. I try to do my best to correct it. But I try to tell my wife, thank you for something every day. Because there's something in this household, in my life, that she helps me with every day. She's a blessing to me. She's my gift. And she didn't become a gift to me, a prize, until I became worthy in her eyes. Which means I had to start demonstrating that I was obedient to God. And I'm sorry, ladies. Um, I have allergies. And so once I became obedient to God, things started to change. I noticed a change. She noticed a change. So it wasn't just lip service. I, I told her that this was a new path I was on. This was a new walk. These are the things that I was going to do. And I'm sure at first, it went in one ear and out the other. Oh, you said things before. You give, you started things and didn't finish them. This is her, this is her response. And it was okay. I wasn't bothered by it. I wasn't going to argue. Because I, I realized that by me, by me not keeping my word, not, not following through, that I was wrong. That really what I was doing was scarring my wife. Every time I let her down, every time I didn't keep my word, every time I didn't follow through, every time I disappointed, that was just another scar, another cut. And I told you in the first video that women are the pain catchers. They remember all these things. They deal with pain a lot differently than men do. They, they, they walk around with their pain. This is why they have to be protected. This is why Adam is given authority or rule. Not because he, he can, so he can manage her and boss her around and supervise her activities. That's not what rule and authority is. It's not what it is now, and it's certainly not what it was then. That just meant Adam was responsible for her, to protect her, to keep her safe, to provide for her. She is delicate. She is worthy of that. Women, I hope for all you out there that don't think that you need a man, and that's fine. Maybe you don't. But if you find a man who loves you the right way, all, all, this, all this being hung up over cement to a man in all ways doesn't even become a problem anymore. Because you would gladly do it. Trust me on this. But it has to be the right man who loves you the right way. This has to be a man who's obedient to God. And like I pointed out in the first video, God has all these instructions for men. Look at the Bible. All these verses that deal with husbands and, and what they're supposed to do. Then look at the verses that deal with wives. Love your husband. Honor and respect. Honor him. Respect his authority. Submit. Three, four instructions. Not a whole lot there, ladies. And the reason there's not a whole lot there because women don't need a lot of instructions. Men need the instructions. Men need the step-by-step -step sequential guide on what to do and how to do it. That's what men need. 
Women have intuition. Adam didn't have intuition in the, in the garden. Eve had enough intuition to know that maybe what God really wants is for us to eat of this tree, for us to gain this knowledge. Maybe there's a bigger picture here that God's trying to achieve. And somehow, Adam wasn't able to figure it out. But Eve was. And as a result of being able to um, and, uh, understand what God's true intentions were, the roles at that point was still, were established. That Eve was going to be that conduit to God. Now, not only does the love of God flow through her, the pain of man flows back to God. And ladies, you don't want to be that conduit. So learn to pray. And if your man is not loving you correctly and is hurting you, pray on it. Give him a chance. Talk to him. Sit down with your church leaders. Help them understand. You don't want to sin against God anymore. You don't want to help this man sin against God anymore. And that he needs to understand that he has to be obedient to God and love me the right way. Preferably, hopefully you do this before you get married. But if you've already gotten married and, and you haven't had this conversation and this understanding, then fine, it's, it's never too late. But before you go hire divorce lawyers, go into divorce court, please give it a chance. Before your marriage is totally destroyed and your lives and your kids are destroyed, give it a chance. Try God's way. Pray on it. And if you don't have anyone to help you see the bigger picture of how this goes and how it should be, then please reach out to me. My URL is flashing on the screen on, on, as we talk. Go to the website. My contact information is there. I'll be glad to sit down and work with husbands. But well, certainly, I'll be glad to sit down and work with husbands and wives to understand because this is a conversation you need to have. He must, absolutely, with no exception, love you the right way. If he doesn't, then you're just rolling the dice. Eventually, you're going to roll snake eyes. But in addition to that, you were helping him sin against God. It was never intended for women to be unprotected out here against the elements, against the snakes, against the angels against bad men who are going to lie to you, say whatever they have to say to steal love from God. This is why men are supposed to protect you. Real men, warrior men, are supposed to protect you, provide for you. You're worthy of that, ladies. Don't ever forget that. You are worthy of this. This is what God has appointed you to be. Play the role. Be a godly woman. And if you're not a godly woman now, and, then, and I'm not talking about you know, your frequency to go into church. You can be in church every Sunday, every Wednesday for Bible study, attend you know, all of the, you know, the classes, the meetings, the rehearsals, and, and all of that still. It's not going to amount to a hill of beans if you have a, a husband in your life that you're allowing him to steal love from God. And you somehow think you're going to be blessed because simply because you go to church and you have acceptance for Jesus. I don't know the, the answer to the bigger question, but I, I suspect, and I wouldn't even want to take the chance. Really. And so once God revealed things to me, I don't want to take the chance. I think, okay, well, maybe I can treat my wife any kind of way the way I did before. And we both had stubborn love. We decided that we had been each married before and divorced. And that this time around, we were just, we were just going to stick it out. No matter what. I don't care what, what he does, what she does. We are just going to stick it out. And rough it out. To death do us part. We're going to live up to those words. And that's how we were stubbornly getting along for a very long time. Now, we're not stubbornly getting along. We love each other. And we love each other the way the Bible says we should love each other. And as a result of doing that, I've seen tremendous change in my wife. My wife is truly my ride or die. She is truly my best friend. She'll do anything for me, and I'll do anything for her. I try to rejoice over my wife. She rejoices over me. And we know that no matter good times or bad, that we're in it together. And that and I have her, her backing and support in all things. I didn't really have that before. 
So the frustration on her part, because she would not be in love properly, the frustration on my part, because I didn't feel that she was loving me correctly. And so it really take it really took being open to having God work in both our lives. But it had to start with me first. I had to accept my role as a savior for my family. The things I had to sacrifice, like Christ did. I had to do the same thing as Christ. I had to be willing to give up my life. You want to give up your life, then other things that you have to give up become minor in that pursuit. But you have to be willing to give up everything up into life itself, the sacrifice for your wife and for your family. You have to be willing to provide the leadership, the authority that God has entrusted you with. And ladies, you know if this is not happening. You know. You know if you're being loved properly. You know. You know if you're being rejoiced over. You know if you're a gift to your husband. You know if you can submit to him without frustration, without stress. Oh, I'm just going to lay here and get it over with. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. Are you ladies? If being a godly woman is a struggle for you, then you don't have to t carry that weight on your shoulder and suffer through it and think there's something wrong with you. That's, that's not your sin to, to carry. Because if a man loves you correctly, you are to be held blameless. You are to be made blameless. You are indemnified against sin in a marriage. But that's all conditioned on you being loved properly the way God's instructed a man or husband to love you. This fact that you are struggling with following three, four simple instructions is a sign that there's a problem. And if there's a problem for you, there's a problem for God. And so you have to bear and deal with that by taking it to your husband and letting him know that, listen, Adam, we have a problem. We have to sit down and talk about this. We have to get right with God. You have to get right with God. I'm not going to accept this anymore. The Bible says you should be, love is slow to anger. Then keep records of wrongdoing. Husbands are supposed to respect, value, treat their wives as partners in the gift of life. Listen to your wife. You're supposed to rejoice over her. That you gain favor from God and you're blessed by God when you do the right things. And to not treat her right means that you run the risk of having your prayers hindered, not listened to by God. You're cut off. The hell that you now create a hell for yourself. And ladies, don't, don't help men participate in this. Help them. You're the map back to God. So he doesn't understand. And maybe you don't fully understand, but you have intuition. You know something is not right. Use that intuition that God gives. That's a gift. When you complain about things that are not right, that's a gift. And you let your husband know that, look, when, when I correct, when I'm pointing out some things that you're doing wrong, I don't want attitude back, lip service, I don't want grumbling. All I want to hear from you is a thank you because I'm doing exactly what God wants me to do to help you become a better man. And you need to be open to this process. You need to learn to be obedient to God. And if you were obedient to God, there would be very little for me to fuss about. In fact, there wouldn't be anything for me to fuss about. If you start following through, if you regain the faith that I've lost and build it back up, if you rebuild the trust that I've lost in you and, and build it back up, all these things are done by doing, not by talk. Adam is charged with doing. When the divisions and the roles are divided in the garden, Adam is charged with doing. He's the door for God. You are are the emotional gatekeeper for God. You're the roadmap. 
You can't be a gift until he's obedient. And to give the gift away when he doesn't deserve it, when he's not being obedient to God, you are helping him steal from God. I don't know any other way to put it, ladies. In the next video, the next video in this collection, I have one more suggestion that you guys have alerted me to and actually came from my wife on some things that men should do to um, make their wives feel good, how to love them. I mean, basic instruction in the Bible, but this is just some common sense stuff. So I'm going to cover that in the next video. But each and every one of you watch my video, you can reach out to me and send your suggestions in also. If you have anything that you want me to cover, and I'm asking you ladies, because I want to at least put together 10 videos in the uh, Chronicles of Eve. I have 10 videos for the uh, Ways of the Caveman. And so for the Chronicles of Eve, I want to uh, do at least 10 videos. And so I have two so far. This is the second. I have a topic for a third. But then after that, my list is clear. So please, I'm, I'm asking you to reach out to me. Send me your suggestions on what you want me to cover. And I promise you I will research the biblical text and find the context, make sure that what is being put out in public, the message by people, by church, by church leaders, is really what God intends be put out there. And if it's not, I'll be the first person to correct it, I promise you. I have no vested interest. I'm not a church. I'm not a church leader. I'm not asking you for any money other than my coaching service. But the videos are for free. They're a gift for you. And I'm trying to do my absolute best to share as much godly knowledge with men and women as possible. And so I'm asking for your help. So hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, share my videos with others, and go to my website, thegrstore.com, get my contact information, and reach out to me. If you do those things, uh, in return, I will add your suggestions to my list and make sure that I cover them in videos. Thank you so much for watching my video. I love all you ladies who are gifts and the ones who are on the way to becoming gifts. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you soon.